Okay, be careful. Oh, oh. Ever since going public with the scandal, Olympus's former CEO says life has been surreal. And I find myself in this John Gresham novel, uh, you know, with all sorts of flying to New York to meet the FBI, references to organized crime. The latest chapter, a showdown with Olympus's board of directors. The 51-year-old, who still remains a director of the company, described the meeting as tense, but civil. We want to have a bright future like today. We're making progress. From being disgracefully fired last month, accused of gross misconduct. The man who worked for 30 years at the business says he believes he did the right thing by going public with the company's financial misdeeds. It's suspected the camera and medical equipment maker hid billions of dollars in investment losses by overstating the cost of buying over certain companies. Woodford says investigators are looking into why Olympus spent hundreds of millions of dollars purchasing companies that sold such things as adult male face cream and plastic plates, and they spent hundreds of millions more hiring consultants based in places like the Cayman Islands. After weeks of denials, Olympus admitted wrongdoing and placed the blame on executives like Tsuyoshi Kikukawa, the true ringleader, say insiders, of the corporation. They wrecked the company mm -hmm. by siphoning off huge amounts of money on all this nonsense. Since Woodford's dismissal, some employees have created a petition calling for his return. That certainly is the wish of major shareholders. But experts say the 51-year-old who says he is willing but not necessarily eager to return could be replaced by a panel of independent directors. It would be nice if Woodford were to ascend the throne again, but it's not necessary. He has done his work already, and he's done it well. Woodford is the highest level corporate executive to ever act as whistleblower. What impact he makes on corporate Japan, he says, will be determined by how well investigators do their work. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Tokyo.